Tom Glavin bluffing the bunt, taking a ball from Mike Hampton as we start the sixth inning. Greg Maddox has gone down to the bullpen. Kevin Millwood's out there too. Anybody see Warren Spahn down there? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't see Kevin Millwood with a glove. <laughs> I guess I just like the view down there. It was getting a little too tense in the dugout. No runs for Atlanta. Hampton. Bagwell. He almost had a little too much lob on that one. Atlanta really hustled. Gerald Williams, the leadoff man, has not been able to hit it. He struck out two times. Gerald has seen one pitch above the knees the whole game. He got that four seam fastball. You pointed it out back in the third inning. He fouled it straight back. We didn't know to begin with if Hampton was going to be able to keep his composure with this big crowd or not, but he's certainly done that. One of the keys to his success today in six innings, he's retired the leadoff hitter all six times. Pop up. Bagwell, foul territory. Two gone. Now, it's not quite Kevin Millwood on Wednesday. On the other hand, I think it's been almost as dominating as Millwood. It's actually been a little bit better than Millwood. He hadn't been scored upon yet. Millwood did give up a run. Are you counting that? Sure, sure. Count that against the kid. Two and zero, oh, or two to nothing is the score. One strike to count. Millwood in the bullpen. That's a base hit for Boone. Boone is two for three today. He is the possible tying run. Change up. Ball one. When you've got Billy Wagner down in the bullpen. You're running out of outs at this point right here. You might not get the tie and run to home plate again in person of anybody, let alone the guy you want it to be, that being Chipper Jones. And they ruled that a swing by Chipper Jones. So it is one strike to count. Bobby Cox didn't think so. Fastball missing. One ball, one strike. Chipper hit a double play in the first and beat out an infield single to shortstop in the fourth. Jones, a 381 career record against Hampton. <laughs> Is that, I mean, that pitch looks like a hard slider. One and two to count. You wonder where all that power from Chipper Jones came from. The one thing Don Baylor did mechanically was he got him more upright. He wanted him to take advantage of his height and that leverage. He also pulled that left arm in just a little bit. Kind of like an ice skater, when they go to do one of those powerful spins, they keep their arms in. When you try to turn on something powerful, you want your arms close together. Too low. Well, in his career before this year, Chipper Jones had averaged only one home run every 56 at bats as a right-handed hitter. I mean, he's just a single hitter batting right-handed. This year, one home run every nine and a half at bats batting right-handed. That's a that's a Sammy Sosa kind of a case. The foul ball again, another change up there from Hampton. Two balls, two strikes. <laughs> Chipper Jones, there you see the numbers 12 homers and 678 at bats right handed until this year. Now he is a legitimate threat from either side of the plate. Well, this is his 11th at bat of the playoffs. He's due in the dirt and heading for second boom. He'll make it easily. Sebio has to go over to the backstop to pick that one up. A wild pitch. Now, Chipper Jones' job is a little different. I mean, just a base hit means a run. Three and two the count. 45 homers. And of course, we all are watching Sports Center. And Chipper Jones had that amazing series against the Mets. In Atlanta with 10 days to go in the season. Four homers in three days, and all four of them put the Braves ahead in the game against the Mets. Three and two. Runner at second. And he walks it. So Chipper Jones does, in fact, draw the walk, the first walk allowed by Hampton in this game. Now Brian Jordan. Well, uh, what about that walk, Rick? Well, he went right after him the first two at bats situation that he felt like he needed to right there when he's the tie and run you can see that Mike Hampton's only working hard from the neck down 
Got a little work going on from the neck up too. He wasn't going to let Chipper get anything that he could hit out of the ballpark. He knows that Brian Jordan is less than 100 percent. His power has gone away the last couple of months. Jordan hits one high and deep in the left center field way way back there. And this one is going a home run. So Brian Jordan finds some of that power which had disappeared the last couple of months of the year. And that is a stunning reversal in this game on the first pitch after the walk to Chipper Jones. Jordan just brushes one way over the 375 marker. And in this ballpark, that is quite a tape measure shot. It is three to two at Lander. Because of that injury to his right wrist, all the quarter zone shots, he actually went 124 at bats without a home run before he went deep against the Mets in New York. That was a hanging breaking ball he hit out in New York. Once again, he got something up off speed. This ball didn't just barely get out of here. It was no doubt. One strike the count to Andrew Jones. The cut, he didn't get it. Only two to count. Brian Jordan. Well, he and Ryan Fresco both seem to be personally offended after game one that the Astros' strategy that day was to whatever, do not allow Chipper Jones ever to see a pitch anywhere near the strike zone, as if they were players not to be reckoned with. Well, since that first game, Jordan and Fresco in game two have been very important forces in that Braves batting order. Well, the one thing Shane Reynolds did in that first game when he pitched around Chipper Jones, he was able to get the next hitter, Ryan Fresco, out all four times. If you're not going to give somebody anything to hit, you've got to know you can get the next guy out. Mike Hampton thought he could get Brian Jordan out. He was wrong. Two strikes. And too low with a changeup. One ball, two strikes. Shane Reynolds who will be back out there on three days of rest in game four tomorrow against John Smoltz at one o'clock Eastern time. And he chased a low changeup with a strikeout. But after getting the first two hitters, the Braves then put three on the board and a 417 foot blast by Brian Jordan. Suddenly the Astros are trailing at home. Last of the six coming up.